Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition. Last time, we came down to this corner of the Underdark where we collected some Sousa bark after having a big fight with many hooked horrors and the bullet who we have now turned to our own side thanks to Glut's wonderful myconoid powers. Now that we have that Sousa bark, I think we are simply going to head back upstairs into the mainland collect a starion here head back upstairs to the surface go back to the blacksmith's shop where we originally found the blueprints for the masterwork weapon and then craft that possibly knit back to camp because we have a whole feast of magic items we're not intending to use. Oh no, it's a deep hole. This is the kind of tangent that you don't escape from, isn't it? Even with your keen eyesight, the hole below you soon plummets into an abyss of impossible darkness. I'm going to listen to the hole. Faint sounds echo against unseen stone. Nothing discernible by eye or ear. H Hello? Your call echoes as it plunges downward before gradually fading away. Well, that's just ominous. We can't jump in the hole, so I guess we'll just be ignoring that. Better that way than uh, everything going terribly wrong in a big fight or something. It's this way back up to this side of the Myconoid camp. I'll see if we can converse with Glut and leave him here in the Underdark because I know this is not his preferred location. Uh, he's staying outside the camp there, I guess. Well, once we get to the surface, his uh, companionship will detach from the party, I'm sure. So, how are we going to get back to the surface efficiently and safely? I guess, really, the Temple of Saloon is just across the way here, really. It's not too far at all. So I'll tell you what, unless I get attacked by another land shark or something, I will jump cut back up to the surface and we'll carry on from there. Gale, Gale has become confused because of a strange plant. I think he got too close to this Timask plant. He laughed a lot, but then it seemed to wind, wear off, and he's now doing better, so. Fortunately, that didn't turn everything to hell, but here we are back at the Temple of Saloon. So, I'll just go upstairs, back through the Goblin Camp, and into the old village. The, the abandoned village, you know the one. The one full of goblins previously. You recall the Fersres, the energy of the Underdark. The Myconid might die if isolated from it. Uh, you can be done. Thank you for your wonderful service. I will refresh myself near Spore's Circle. Alright, we've officially dismissed those guys. I will carry on our jump cut up to the surface. Alright, back to the nice calm outdoors. Now we just have to get out of the camp, up the pathway, and then we'll be at the blacksmith's shop. And here we are back in the blighted village. And through these shabby wooden doors... 
back to the blacksmith's workshop where a lot of this all started. So we have the great big fireplace, an anvil, Susa bark. Let's see if the quest log is going to give us some more exact directions. We did that. Oh, we can go back to Glut and have another conversation with him, perhaps. Uh, we want to finish the masterwork weapon. We got the Susa bark. Now we need to head back to the forge. All right. Now let's see if we can't find that specific journal they're speaking of. I put most of our books in Precise arcs and neat drawn lines from the reference of three weapons. A great sword, a sickle, and a dagger. Each length and angle is marked with exact measurements, and forging instructions are printed carefully along the bottom of the page, emphasizing an unusual ingredient, Susa bark. The Susa bark can only be applied to an ordinary, unmodified blade. Okay, so the fire is lit. I don't have a sickle. What kind of a plain weapon do we have? This is a great sword. There's a great sword, a sickle, or a dagger. Well, it's going to have to be a dagger because that is really the only type of weapon we use between Astarian and Shadowheart. So... Let's see if we can't find... A someone must have a spare dagger. A Starian must have heaps of them. Are they really all going to be back at camp? You should always carry a spare dagger. All right, give me a second. I will go and fetch a dagger. So we've come up to the teleportation circle because that's the only way we can get back to camp. So let's fast travel to camp because we don't actually want to have a long rest. That's not the purpose of our visit for once. Instead, over in this box here, I've been hoarding a lot of the extra gear, particularly the magical weapons that we're not capable of using and such. So my intent is to try and sell a bunch of this stuff that we can't use because we could do with the extra funds because the trader who was friends with the Mind Flayer had some really interesting stuff. So we're going to take a spare dagger and a bunch of these plain plus one weapons that we're not using. And see what else we want to take. Like, a lot of this stuff is really interesting. What's what's in there? I don't remember what is in this patched together sack. And I can't pick it up. Send it to Shadowheart. She's in the camp, so I'm not too worried about this. Oh, it's all of the all of the herbs and stuff. And we don't need eight extra shields or all this extra armor. We'll just take as basically as much as Andrew can carry. Which is about that much. No. Alright, Andrew's at his carry weight. Hopefully that'll be enough to get some of the magic stuff we want. And we've picked up a spare dagger. So let's get ourselves back to the Blighted Village.
and let's jump back to that forge. So, I don't know if this wants to be the dagger or the susabark, if I'm honest. Nope, that equipped it. Who even has the susabark? A starion, doesn't he? There's no combine. Bark is in place. Now for a great sword, dagger, or sickle. There you go. There's your dagger. awaits an offering a candy sweet scent wafts forth the Sousa bark infuses the weapon from within the flames the flames sputter away the dagger is yours for the taking okay what did we get Susa Dagger. 1d4 plus 1 piercing. Smoke-like whirls of Susa sap darken the metal of this dagger's blade and slice its victims. Plus 1 dagger. Is that really... it? Like, if we go into Astarian's inventory... That's not a plus one dagger. This is a plus one dagger. If we give that to Andrew, who's now over encumbered. Plus one dagger. Susa dagger. Range five feet, light finesse dippable. Range five feet, light finesse dippable. Well, that is upsetting. I really thought we'd get something a bit more interesting. But apparently, it's just a plus one dagger. Well, that was a whole lot of build up for not very much resolution. But you know, plus one weapons are good weapons. It's just that in the video game world, we've had plenty of them. Right. We are going to go sell a bunch of stuff. We will start in the Druid's Grove and then head to the Underdark afterwards. But before we can do that, we need to make sure Andrew isn't encumbered anymore. Give that back to Astarian. Give that back to Astarian. And I will do a quick walk over to the Druid's Grove and then we'll go back to the Underdark and finish our shopping. And arriving back to the Druid's Grove, I assume all the traders and stuff will still be here. I know a lot of the tieflings left, although I think the blacksmith downstairs was a tiefling. So we might have limited options. Karga is still here. Makes sense, she is a druid. So we'll speak to Aaron. Good old Aaron. So it's true. You scattered the goblins. Peace can finally return to this corner of the Sword Coast. Thank you. I just want to trade. Of course. Now, notice our attitude did not go up after all that, but that's his prerogative, I guess. Um, we should probably do this as Shadowheart for the extra, like, 10-15% that it all gives, so I'll do that. May you keep balance. Right, Shadowheart now has a whole heap of this stuff. I'll keep
keep some of the more niche stuff for a minute. But all this jewellery can definitely go. Alright, that's almost exactly as much gold as they have. So... I don't think there's going to be anything else we want. We could take the extra scores of Revivify, but we do have a fair few in our possession at the moment. So we will trade all that stuff off. He hasn't got enough gold to trade for that, but... May you keep balance. That should aid us in what we're trying to buy later on. I'll just check downstairs, see if anyone's still here. It looks like everybody's picked up shop and left, but that does mean that this potion of hill giant strength here used to be a crime to take this, but now no longer so. Same for this potion of healing. We don't need another toad teapot, but I'll check out if there's any extra supplies. Since the tieflings have gone, they don't require them anymore, I guess. And any of the other traders got stuff? That side's all still theft, interestingly. And this is where the smith was working, but obviously they've left. Liam and Loic are still here. But I don't think they're traders. So let's get back into the Underdark where those other traders were, see what else we can sell, and then see if we've got enough cash for what we want to buy. Alright, we are back in the Selenite outpost. Let's just see if we can make the walk back down to the Myconoid camp without being attacked by anything untoward down here. It still does not feel like the safest place to just be wandering through, you know? Still feel like some level of caution should be abided to. Uh, this is where we leap over. Yeah, still don't really fancy trying to take on those minotaurs up there. But that's gone fairly well, so we'll finish out our trading. See if Grub, Glut, whatever his name was, has actually any quest stuff to resolve with us. But first, let's see about those traders. Here we go. Excuse us. Again, should have been with Shadowheart. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. Trading, I please. Do enjoy a good bargain. If anything in my private collection is to your liking. Right. Let's get rid of some of this extra shiny stuff we found on the way. We want to keep the potions. And we were after the circlet of blasting. The Sunwalker's Gift and the Sapphire Spark. But that is still quite a hefty sum, isn't it? So, super insanely good magic missiles. Let's go with this, because we do have second level spell Dark Vision for Gale, which I think that's what that probably is. Any of this stuff that we can sell? Can we sort by value? Scrolls of Guiding Bolt. Yeah, none of this stuff really remaining is awfully valuable. But we can afford these two. One necklace, one circlet. And we would need to find 700 gold if we wanted that. I think we probably can. I have mushrooms to ca Especially because we have uh, the egg that we never sold. That's worth 750. So let's give that to Shadowheart. 
Let's give some shiny rocks over. Such an accelerated rate. Don't need that extra shield. We can get just about time to throw away these bloodstones. Malachite. Google, don't demonetize me. That's a joke. I don't get any money for these. Shiny rocks. Your request item. You can stay. Jewelry. Shiny rocks. Any more for any more. Alright, let's trade off that stuff and see if that'd be enough. Welcome back. Have you made any new discoveries? Just looking to trade. I do enjoy a good bargain. If anything in my private collection is to your liking. Shiny stuff, shiny stuff. We want this ring. We don't quite have enough cash. Can't possibly give away her circlet that she's maintained her possession of this whole time. Uh, we are... How far off are we? Like, one scroll's worth? Sorted. All right. Very well. I have mushrooms to catalog. I think this will be the last time I worry about gear and seeing who's got what. So I will pause once again, do some micromanagement, and show you the results, and then we'll go off on what might just be our last adventures of this campaign. Or perhaps after I finish my All right. Here is the current loadout for everybody. Gale has the Circlet of Blasting, which lets him cast Scorching Ray once per long rest for free. He has the Robes of Summer, resistance to cold damage, and is wearing Corellian's Grace, wielding Corellian's Grace. If he's attacked while not wearing armor, they receive a d4 bonus to saving throws. He also has the Sapphire Spark, which, when casting Magic Missile, adds 1d4 psychic damage for each dart. Also gives us, once per long rest, free use of Magic Missile, as well as our standard Magic Missile we can cast with spell slots. Ring of Poison Resistance, Resistance to Poison. And the Sunwalker's Gift, the Ring's Arcane Jewel parts all but the Darkest Shadows. I presume that's going to give him effective Dark Vision. Andrew has the Shadow of Mezabranazan, which is the Shrouded in Shadow action, becoming invisible. The Oak Father's Embrace. Undead creatures attacking us receive 1d6 radiant damage, but beasts attacking us deal an extra 1d6 damage. Herbalist Gloves. If we heal somebody that's poisoned, they are no longer poisoned. And the Absolute's Warboard lets us cast Abjuration Spell Absolute Protection once. We have the Absolute's Talisman. When the wearer has less than 25% of their hit points left and deals damage, they regain 1d8 hit points. And the plus 10 foot movement speed ring. Shadowheart. Wapira's Crown. When healing another, the wearer gains 1d6 hit points and plus 1 to deck saves. The Slippery Chain shirt we found is actually a plus 1 shirt, so wearing this did not bring down our armor class. But when we heal a creature, they automatically disengage and won't trigger opportunity attacks. And Hellrider's Pride. When we heal another creature, they gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, dent by weapon attacks. I've also given her the Susa Dagger. We spent so much time making it, we might as well wield it. And we have the Amulet of Lost Voices for Cast Speak with Dead. Lastly, Astarian has the Helmet of Autonomy, prof proficiency in Wisdom Saving Throws. Strow Studded Leather Armor for plus one stealth. Metallic Gloves, plus one saving throws for strength. Spider Step Boots, immune to being in webbed. Plus one short sword, plus one short sword. The Amulet of Misty Step, granting Misty Step. And the Ring of Color Spray, level one illusion spell, along with a plus one longbow. So, we are as kitted out as I think we are basically ever going to get on this campaign. So, join us next time where we will go delve deeper into the Underdark than we've ever been. See if we can't 
figure out where this... Oh, that mushroom's going to explode. Figure out where the night song is, the nightingale. The thing that we're looking for, the night song. See if we can figure out where that is and then tie up any other loose ends. But I think we really are getting to the end of this campaign. I have a good idea of what's going to be up in the next campaign for something quite different, I think. But we'll see when we get there. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.